Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to be reading graphs today. So we'll be looking at graphs, specifically ones from the news that were terrible, and show you why they're terrible and what to look out for when you're reading graphs in the news. The first group of graphs I'm going to show you from several different um, news sites have the same offense. They get rid of the zero on the vertical axis. When you get rid of a zero on the vertical axis, what you do is you make the data look more extreme than what it really is. This one here, it looks like from this point to about this point, it doubles, right? The, the amount of uh, welfare received, it looks like it doubles, and then by the end it triples, when really it's going from 97 to 107. Here's a perfect example where they where we see the um, the skewed inaccurate graph, and then you see here the corrected graph. So again, they got rid of the zero, making it seem like an extreme discrepancy between the Republicans, Independents, and Democrats. Look at that huge discrepancy. But what they didn't show was the bottom 52 percent, um, like they do in this graph, and you can see that that changes the way the graph looks. It does, this person, you know, it, it's a huge difference, huge difference. And here it is um, on a graph from MN, uh, MSNBC as well. This one starts at 500 and goes up to 1500 instead of starting at zero. So what that does is it makes little changes here seem bigger. And it makes things seem more drastic. It makes it seem like, oh, wow, we're, we're almost done. We're practically down to zero when really we're at 500 billion um, and that's the projected one there so this is something to look out for when you're looking at graphs just make sure that you look at the bottom corner graphs should almost always start with zero unless there's a really good reason for it let's take a look at another offense Notice this one does not start at zero either, but that's not the offense I'm looking at. I'm not looking at the vertical axis on this one. I'm looking at the horizontal axis. Look at the timeline carefully. Last year, last week, and current. So this goes from a year ago to a week ago to our current. If we're going to draw this more accurately, it would look like that. Think about it. A year ago, a week ago, current, right, is about how it should be. If last year's here, last week should be up here, increasing by eight cents in a week, you know? So that's what it should show. It's also kind of vague, last year. They could have picked any time last year to make the graph look like what they wanted it to look like. So being vague and being inconsistent on the horizontal axis is just as much of an offense as being vague on the vertical axis. Let's look at our next offender. Hello, climate change. This is a graph to show the hottest years um, on record. So it starts out with uh, 1921 and then kind of moves its way up. But wait a minute. Look, the years are all out of whack. So this graph is trying to show a couple of things and trying to make it seem like 2012 was the most hot year ever and that we're, look, it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. But really, when you arrange the dates, it's not getting hotter according, I mean, 2012 is still the largest, but you can see that if you were to actually put them in chronological order, it would sort of make a little bit more sense. Now, I understand they're, if they're trying to show years like here's the hottest year here's the second hottest and third hottest and stuff there's probably a better way to do it usually when you have dates along the bottom they should be in a chronological order also the way that the graph is set up makes this side smaller than this side which kind of emphasizes the point they're trying to make trying to make this side look even bigger than than it might look on a flat two-dimensional bar graph so things to look out for when you're glancing quickly at a graph now let's look at one of my favorites. Percents should add up to 100. If they don't add up to 100, they should be pretty close. They certainly shouldn't be a yes-no vote that adds up to 110. That just doesn't make any sense at all. This is the worst offense here. There's not really a good reason why that should ever happen. This is a mistake. And you can see that constantly. Like you constantly uh, percents don't add up to being 100. Here's another example over here where you have a 70, 60, and 63. And the reason for this might be that it's an opinion poll. 
and they might have asked which one of these can you, would you support you can select as many as you want and that way it would show that like you know 60% support Romney Huckabee 63 um, Palin 70 and and that would be fine but if it's showing part out of the whole that's what a pie graph is for if it's showing a comparison it should be done in a bar graph so it's using the wrong kind of graph pie graph should add up to 100 percent percentages and yes no should definitely add up to 100 percent hello learn to add all right let's look at um the error of cherry picking cherry picking is when you pick part of a graph to try and prove the point that you're trying to make. This will often happen when you hear weird dates like look at the data for the last 18 years instead of look at the data for as far back as we have it or 20 years, 25 years. It's kind of an obscure number. So if they're calling for data for just a certain period of time, might that's a weird number. That might be kind of a red flag. If there are extreme results that vary from source to source, and you also always have to consider your source. I'm going to come up with four different conclusions based on this graph. My first conclusion is the world's coming to an end. Look at this. It's an exponential curve. It's going to increase, and it's going to just go higher and higher and higher at a crazy rate that's out of control. OK. so. I could make that conclusion based on the line that I've drawn on there. All right, let's look at another conclusion. Wow, the temperature is dropping. If I only looked at that part of the graph, I'm starting at the spike in 1999, I could say that the temperature is actually dropping. If I just pick that small part from 99 to 2011, um, I would be able to say that the temperature is actually decreasing. Or if I wanted to make it seem pretty dramatic, but not quite as dramatic as my curved line, I might pick from like the 1965 area up to 2012, say, look at the slope of this. Holy cow. When an accurate, oh, and one more, maybe nothing's happening. Like if I pick from, um, again, the spike in 1999 up to the spike in 2012, and I look at the down, the cold year, you know, down in 2010, 2009, and eight there, then I might say, look, there's no change at all. There's some below, some above. It's average. It's staying right about where it should be. Um, and if you only show parts of the data, you can come to all these different conclusions. If we look at the overall data from 1895 up until 2012, you'd have a line that's about a consistent line like this. Now, perhaps maybe this data is inaccurate or incomplete. Maybe there's more data to it. Maybe this is a dip and a rise. Maybe this is actually part of a downward slope or an even slope. If there was more data, we would be able to come up with an even better conclusion. The more data you have, the better you can make long-term conclusions and predictions. And so if you're getting people who are saying, let's look at 10 years of data when there's almost uh, you know, over 100 years of data available, um, they're probably trying to make a specific point, and they are definitely guilty of cherry picking. So three things to look at. One, vertical axis should start at zero. Number two, check the source. Is it recent? Is it credible? Is it strong enough to make to support the claim that you're trying to make? If this is um, Mr. Buffington's kindergarten class favorite colors, I can't use that to predict the entire world population of you know who likes green. So just make sure that the source is strong enough to support the claims you're trying to make. And then your horizontal axis should be consistent. If it's time, it should be chronological and it should be consistent one to the next. I hope that lesson was helpful for you in reading graphs, especially when we're looking at the news. I hope it helps you to think a little bit more critically when you see those graphs. I hope it was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.